This is Nick with logosbynick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this glitched text effect using GIMP. And if you'd like to know how you can update GIMP with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. And if you'd like to use the exact font I'm using for this tutorial, it's called Lead Gothic. It's a free font. I'll have that linked in the description as well. So uh, I'm going to create a new document. I'll go to File, New. And I want an image size that has 1280 by 720 pixels. And again, we want to set pixels as the measure of uh, the uh, unit of measurement. And go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color, so we have a back a black background there. When you open up GIMP by default, there should be the foreground set to black and the background set to white. If not, just go ahead and put that in there manually, and uh, go ahead and fill this in so we have a black background. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some text. What I'll do first is I'll flip around the foreground and the background so we now have white and as the foreground and black as the background so that when we create our text, it shows up in white. Uh, I'll grab the text tool, click on the canvas. And for this tutorial, I'm just gonna write GIMP in all caps. And I already have these presets um, set from when I was previously making this thumbnail before. But the presets you'll want for the font, you wanna come up here and choose the lead Gothic fonts or like I said, whatever font you'd like. Usually a good sans font should work just as well. Uh, the size, go ahead and change the size as needed, up and down, I think, I'll make that a little bigger. That's pretty good. And uh, the color, set that to white. And the spacing between the letters, I have mine set at seven. We're gonna want some, we're gonna want some breathing room between these letters or else the effect is not really gonna work. So um, you don't want them too close together. I found that seven for this font is a good distance right here. And once we have that set, we can go to the Move tool. Actually, note we can go to the Alignment tool and then click on the text with the Alignment tool. And where it says Relative to, we wanna change that to Image and just center it up on the, uh, the center and the middle with these two buttons right there. Get it on the center of the page. And once we've done that, I'm gonna right click that text layer and go to Alpha to Selection. And it's gonna create a selection going around the text. And I'm gonna create a new layer right here with this button that says Create a New Layer. We're gonna want transparency set. Go ahead and click OK. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the foreground color and change it to a shade of blue, a light blue, something like this. If you'd like to use this same exact sh uh, shade, the HTML notation is 00FFFC. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And once we have that set, we'll go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color, and then we can go to Select None. So we now have blue text there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll grab the move tool and I'm gonna zoom in on this text so I get a closer look at it. I'm gonna hold control and roll up the mouse wheel. And with the move tool, I'm gonna click and drag this text to the right. And then I'm gonna hold control so it locks it onto the uh, horizontal axis like that. And then I wanna take this layer and click and drag it beneath the text layer. So we have it underneath there like that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna repeat those same steps only using a different color this time. So I'm gonna click on the GIMP text Right click that and go to Alpha to Selection. Click this button right here that says Create a New Layer and Add it to the Image. Again, Transparency, go ahead and click OK. And I'll change this blue shade to a pink shade now, something like that. Uh, the exact shade I'm using here is F600FF. Go ahead and click OK. And then again, go to uh, Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And then we'll go to Select None. And I'm going to zoom back in over this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I'm going to take this text and move it to the left. I'm going to hold control and lock it onto the horizontal axis and move it to the left a little bit. Then I'll just take this layer and, and bring it beneath both text layers right about there. And I'm going to hold control and roll, out the, uh, roll down the mouse wheel a little bit to uh, zoom out. And as you can see, we have everything uh, set there as far as the colors go. So the next step would be, uh, I'm going to turn off the visibility of the background layer here with this little eye, uh, this eye button. And then from this top layer, I'm gonna right click and go to new from visible. And that's gonna create a new layer from everything visible. And after I've done that, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the visibility of everything else and then turn on the visibility of the background. Now we're gonna want a duplicate visible copy because we're gonna edit this further. And in case we wanna go back and change this, we have these original layers right here to go back and work with. Uh, work with. So once we've done that, with this new visible layer selected, I'm gonna grab the shear tool, which is over here. And I'm just gonna click and drag this text to the right a little bit, just to shear that just a tiny bit, maybe about that much. Maybe degree of negative 70, go ahead and click shear, just to give our text a little bit of a slant like that. 
And once we've done that, if you notice here, some of the layer is sticking out from the image. So I'm going to go to layer and I'm going to choose layer to image size. And that's going to fit everything back inside of the layer there, inside of the, uh, the canvas's uh, boundaries there. And now that I've done that, the next step would be to create these little lines of motion that you see here. And to do that, let me zoom in on this again. I'm going to grab the rectangle select tool and I'm going to click and drag and create a rectangle going over the, uh, like a small little sliver of a rectangle going over top portion of this text here. And once I've done that, I'll right click on that selection and go to select float. And once we've floated that selection, I'm going to grab the move tool and just click and drag this to the left a little bit. And I'm going to hold control to lock it onto the horizontal axis. I'll move it over a little bit like that. And once we've done that, we can finalize it by clicking this anchor key right here, this anchor, anchor the floating layer. And there we go, we have that set. And we're gonna wanna go and repeat this process a few more times. As you see here, I have, uh, I've done this a few times for this thumbnail. Uh, I'll go back to the rectangle select tool. I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna grab a bigger chunk this time. You don't want everything, to, you don't want it to look like a pattern. So you wanna use like different sizes and different, going in different directions and everything. So uh, once I've done that, right click it, select, go to float. Go back to the move tool. And this one I'll move to the right a little bit. I'm gonna hold control to lock it onto the vertical axis. Go ahead and click the anchor button to finalize that. And I'm just gonna repeat this process a few more times. I'll grab the uh, rectangle select tool. I'm gonna to create a bigger section right here. Something like that. And again, right click, select, float. Grab the move tool. Bring this one to the right. I'm gonna hold control to lock it onto the horizontal axis. Maybe slightly like that and go ahead and click the anchor button. Grab the rectangle select tool. I'm gonna to put one more big one down here. Maybe right there. And again, we're just gonna repeat these same steps over and over again. I'm just gonna move this one slightly like that. And now what I'll do is I'll anchor that what I'll do now is I'll create a bunch of tiny, uh, like a tiny little sliver selections like you see at the top here. Grab the rectangle tool. I'm gonna create one down here. Right click, select, uh, float. Go back to the move tool. I'm gonna move this one far out to the right, something like that. Anchor that down. And I'll just go back and create another one. Come over here. Right click, select, float, uh, go back to the, you might want to use the keyboard shortcuts. I'm just going to use M for the move tool. Move this one out like that, anchor it. And again, I'm using the, I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcuts so I don't have to keep going over here. R on the keyboard is the keyboard shortcut for the rectangle tool. So I'll press R and I'll create another selection down here and do the same thing. Float the selection, press M to get back to the move tool. Move that one over a little bit, anchor it down. And at some point you're gonna to wanna to zoom out and look at it to see how it looks. You don't wanna to go too, you don't wanna to get too carried away with it. I think right there, that's pretty good, um, that's a pretty good uh, amount of uh, selections to create right there. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. And what I'll do now is I wanna import the image of static in here to put it beneath uh, the text. So to do that, I'm just gonna grab the static image. I'll have this linked in the, the, uh, in the uh, description section of the video. Just click and drag that into the, the image static has an embedded core. Yeah, just go ahead and click convert. And I'm just gonna, once I've done that, I'm gonna take this static layer and bring it down to the second from the bottom so it's just above the background layer. And I'll right click on that layer and go to add layer mask. We wanna use white full opacity and go ahead and click add. And then I want to take this foreground color and change this to white. Six Fs if you'd like to use that shade, that's uh, flat white. And what I'll do now is I'll go to the uh, blend tool and I'm going to change the uh, gradient over here. We're going to want foreground to background. And from the shape, we want radial. And once I've done that, I'm going to bring the cursor towards the center of that uh, static image and I'm going to click and drag a line going out to the left. And I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard to lock it onto the horizontal axis. And I'm gonna bring that line to just before the inside edge of the static image and then let go of everything. And that should create a uh, sort of like a faded out selection going towards the edges of the photo. And once we've done that, we can take the opacity of that and bring that down a little bit just to make it uh, look nice. Whatever, uh, you could just eyeball it and see what, you're looking at, what looks nice for you. To me, I think 57 looks good. 
based on my, my monitor and what I'm using here. And one final step, I guess, would be to discolor this a little bit. So what we could do is let's turn off the visibility of the background layers. And, uh, well, you know what? We don't need to do that. Let's turn that back on. I was still thinking like we were working off of these layers. We'll take the visible layer here. We'll go to colors, hue, saturation, and I'll bring up the saturation a little bit, and I'll take the lightness and bring that down a little bit. Just so it's a little off-white. We don't want it to be like completely white, just a little off-white like that. And you can even play around with this a little bit, see what looks best. You might want to even bring the saturation down a little bit, maybe something like that. No, I think it looks good right about there. Bring the lightness down. And you could just toggle the uh, preview off and on to see what looks. And that's what I was going for right there, just for something a little off-white. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Or maybe I'll just a little less. Go ahead and click OK. You can adjust it to your own liking. And with that said, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. That's how you can create that glitch text effect using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.